Hey and welcome here to my new tutorial. So in this episode we will have a closer look here on the material study which I did recently. So here I have a super simple scene, it's just a plane with a quixel texture on it and I have a shader ball and I have an HDR. So the HDR is pretty simple setup, it's just an intensity of 2 and a texture applied. And here the camera is nothing special, it's just a 85mm and on the Arnold I enabled the depth of field, which we can turn off anyway here for the IPR session. So we are interested here in the shader, so let's open up here the hypershade and we go here for the metal and as you can see it's a super simple material anyway and we will delete it. Bye bye. Alright, so we want to insert your new material, AI standard surface, great. Let's hook it up here into the shader engine node and fire up the IPR and it's white. Yoohoo, cool, look at this shader. But that's not what we want, right? Right. Okay, we want to insert here metal mass and we are getting here a pretty shiny sphere. And we start here with the base color values and for that we insert here a layer node, a layer RGBA and for the moment we plug it here into the shader engine node. Disable the layer input 1 and we go here for the 8. So the way this node works is a bit different, as you maybe know. Um, it's here the bottom layer and every other layer will go on top of it. But you will see that in a second, so no worries. So we can have here the base color of it. So if we turn it up, it will go higher in the value. So just to show, oh, we are anyway here in the wrong one. Just to demonstrate how it looks like here on the metal, we can just pipe it back here for a moment. So if we go darker, it will go darker. If we go up in it, it will go brighter. So we want to have something like that to start with it. And next is a curvature node. So maybe you will ask why a curvature node and I will tell you why in a second or I will show it in a second why. So here, pipe it into the shader output, or shader engine, and insert some, some radius value here. Maybe something like that. It depends on your, your scene scale, and object scale, and stuff like that, and make it a bit sharper. So we want to use these values to brighten up the edges. This is a very common common effect on metal or on plastic as well. So I can't tell you why it's, but it is. So trust me. But we want to break it up a bit more. So for that we can use here another layer node. Insert it here into the 8. Disable this one here. Enable 8. Plug this one into it here and we can go for a fractal, fractal noise. Insert it here into the 7 and enable the 7 input and we can see here the fractal noise. So let's tile it first a bit more. Let's go for something like that. Yeah, that's actually cool. And. Let's go here for a ramp node to give it a bit more contrast. So you can do the same effect with uh, with an AI range node as well, but I like the ramp node because I have here the visual feedback of the values. So I'm a very visually guy, so I like to see what I'm doing. So let's create here a bit more contrast. something like that and here back on the node we can go for a multiply operation. Ah, 
that's that's why this this note is is, is so horrible. You you will expect to do it here on, on on this input, but that's wrong. It's not like in every other tool where you do the stuff on that stage here. You are doing it here. So you tell the node, hey, take what's up here and do this operation here. So let's go here for the multiply and now we are talking here. Great. So let's see. This is a bit too strong. Ah, yeah. This this note is so fucking weird. I don't want to go root here, but yeah. We can say, hey, look, the dark parts, lift them a bit up. So we are not here with some pure black spots. So we can lift it up just a bit up. So let's let's go even a bit more. Great. Now let's hook it up here into the input 7 and put it here into the 7 great and let's wire up the spaghetti here nice we have nothing here so we need to enable it here and yeah as we learned previously we need to do the operation here so we want to screen it so all the black will be gone and now as you can see here we have the brighter edges which will result in the end as brighter or more glossier, shinier edges on the metal surface. So here you can see it, it's, it's a bit brighter and this is exactly what we are looking for. It's just a very subtle effect, but that's what in the end creates the photorealism. So it's, it's a collection of small changes and small subtle effects which will create the photorealism in the end. So now let's organize it here a bit. And now let's let's go further for the roughness. So I have here my cool handy tool, which I can use to browse through my texture library. And I'm here on my grunge pack, which I have available on Gumroad. I will put the link into the description. And we can drag and drop here a texture. So here on the texture we need to switch here to utility raw so it's off screen sorry but it's under utility and raw so because we are only interested in the pure color data which is stored in a texture so i like to go here for the box because the caution will will blur it a bit and i want to have sharp details great so here we can go for the RR output for the roughness and fire up the IPR. And we here we have our roughness details. But let's tile it a bit more, I guess. Let's go for three times. Let's check. Yeah, three three times is cool. Great, but that's not enough. We go here as well for a lane node. I mean imagine this this node world would work like in Photoshop. It's it would work like a charm but yeah I don't want to go here into such a war okay so here we need to wire up uh, the red channel because yeah it expects here some scalar values and here we want to disable the one and enable the eight and here we can set the base color so that's why I'm doing it this way, so I can fully art direct how my base looks like, how, how glossy it is or how rough it is, and I can separate all the overlaying textures and adjust it by its own. So that's very handy to do it this way. So let's go here for, yeah, let's say something like that. And now we can wire up here to the input seven, enable it. And here we want to screen it. Where is it? Here is it. So now we have here the, the base, which we can fully adjust without affecting here the texture, which is cool, right? Let's go here for something like that back. All right, and now these this spots are too rough for my taste. So we can just decrease here the mix to create a more subtle effect. So as you, as I said previously, the subtle effects which will create the photorealism in the end. Let's decrease it even a bit more. Let's go for 
Yeah, 0 0.5 is great. Nice. Now let's go for the bump. For that we need the AI bump 2D node. Insert it here into the camera normal. We want to have stronger, stronger value here. And we start with an AI noise. No, AI noise. Yeah, that's what I want. Let's insert here the red one. Bump map. And we can see some stuff is happening here, but that's too uh, high frequency. We want to scale it a bit down. So let's go for maybe something like that. And why I'm doing that is to break up the perfect sphere. So nothing in the real world is perfectly, perfectly round. So you will break up the stuff. And that's why I insert here into the bump node a uh, noise node to break up here the specular highlights a bit. And this, this is also a very subtle effect, but as I said previously, that's what we want. It's also a bit too strong here, so we can go here for the black color and lift it a bit up. Maybe something like that, and the whites as well go a bit down, so we are closer to a, to a mid, mid value. So I'm talking about mid value. Um, the mid value is uh, a value of 0 0.5 on the gray grayscale uh, range here. So it's in the middle. And this this will tell the bump node that it's 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 zero. So it, it doesn't go up and it doesn't go down. While black will tell the bump node it goes down in the surface while the white will lift it up. Great, but that's not enough. We also want here the roughness part or the, the roughness details affecting here our bump. For that we also want here again the channel, the layer, the AI layer RGBA node. <laughs> that's how it's pronounced. Great, we want to insert it here. Yeah, we can go for the color here and here we want the red nice and it looks the same as before and we need a reverse node because here on the tile ball we can see it here display the soloid here with this cool little button we have here the white spots and this will tell the roughness hey you are here a bit more rough while on the black you are more glossy and the bump as I said previously, white will push it out in the surface while black will push it inwards. And we want to have this rougher part pushed inwards, so we need to reverse it. Now it shows switched here. Yeah, why? Aha, yeah. It needs to be wired up, otherwise, it won't display it. So, enabled here. Come on, I want to show it. Now you can see it here, now it's inverted. So we can go here back and do here a uh, multiply operation, which means all the white areas will be gone. Great. So now we shall see here our details from the roughness breakup. So we can with shift drag and left mouse button, we can to here the render region or you can just press here the button on top and give it a second to render and we can see how our details looks like. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah we can see there is a bit of action going on here. But we can see if we can crank it up a bit more. So yeah, close this one here. Are we on the right track? So yeah, we are multiplying, which... Ah, look, look. That's so horrible. This note, this, this note is so horrible. So yeah, if, if you want to do uh, a riot on the... On the Arnold... <laughs> on the Arnold Discord channel, feel free to do it. 
we need to disable it here and now we can see I'm completely overdoing it here with the values it makes so much fun yeah we are too strong here yeah the subtle um, values the subtle effects will create the photorealism so decrease here just the mix to create a more subtle effect yeah we can we can go a bit up again let's go for something like that and insert some elevator music but I think we can already see it, it has some some surface action going on here yeah look yeah that's what we want and I mean that's it as you can see it's a pretty easy setup and I highly really recommend or invite you to to test out by yourself some stuff so use this as a, as a starting base or yeah ju just to build up on top so you can go or what, what I did on my um, render with you maybe so we can go here for the thin film and do something like a thickness of 500 an IOR of that value which is chroma when I'm not wrong so thin film means it creates a very thin fat film over it or on the metal so you can create some some metal uh, effects which will come from the industrial um, what is it in English so when, when you when you work with the metal and it gets some some heat stuff going on or it gets some some contact with some other metals and it gets pretty hot and stuff like that it will create such effects so sorry I'm missing here a few <laughs> English words to give you the the correct answer so if someone knows it feel free to type it into the comments but I think you got what I mean and you can also go for the Arnold documentation which is anyway a great documentation by the way uh, there is everything pretty well explained and yeah that's what I did here for my metal the wood is just a simple wood material which comes from mega scans I just inserted here a bump 2d node on top of the normal normal node with the albedo piped in just to give more high frequency details that's actually a pretty cool trick to give to get more details out of it and here the plastic it's the exact same method I used for the metal with the curvature I brighten up here a bit the edges and instead of using metalness I just inserted a bit of subsurface color here come on uh, super slow I don't rendering here yeah you can see it's it's pretty simple and just a bit of, of roughness stuff going on here and a bit of bump nothing really special and yeah as I said use this as a base and experiment by yourself gain your your own experience with it and feel free to post your results on our server we are happy to see it and if you have questions feel free to ask there and we are all happy to help out and I hope this video was helpful to you and I even hope more to see you on our next tutorial so happy rendering and bye bye